Welcome in to another Red Out Podcast. My name is Devin. Uh, we're coming at you tonight to talk Western basketball, uh, Lady Tops, softball, and baseball. So stick with us. Hey, how about them tops, son? All day, SEC boys. You're listening to the Red Out Podcast. I am not ashamed to admit in the past, I've needed a therapist. We all need someone, and it's a strong person who can admit it. I talked to my doctor who referred me to a therapist, and I really didn't have much say as to who the therapist was. But with this episode's sponsor, BetterHelp, you do. You can filter out who you would like to talk to, age, gender, religion, and more to pair you with the person who works best for you. And if the person isn't exactly who you are wanting, you're not stuck. You can switch counselors. BetterHelp strives to offer affordable, professional, and accessible online therapy. So go to BetterHelp.com slash Redout today to save 10%. By doing this, you not only support us, you can work toward a brighter, healthier you. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Yes, thank you to BetterHelp. We appreciate your support. Uh, If you would like, you can like, share, and subscribe to the episode. That doesn't cost you anything, and it helps us out a lot. Uh, It also increases our algorithm uh, on the YouTubes and the Facebooks and all that good stuff. Um, Yep, and the Twitters. Um, But definitely support. uh, Your support means a lot. Uh, If you would like to reach out to BetterHelp, you know, we pre the it use our affiliate link, uh, betterhelp.com forward slash red out. And, um, you know, it also gives you 10% off, but it also helps us out as well. Uh, so we appreciate your support there. Hello, Jared. Hello, Matt. How's it going, guys? What up? Hey, man. Not a lot. Um, kind of, uh, kind of excited, a little nervous tonight. Um, I think we've all come to the conclusion that Western's men's basketball team is not going to do well in the tournament. It's very bold of you to assume that. <laughs> so, so any plans you've made, just crumble those up just like that and throw them away. I mean, we're only an eight seed. I don't know how it could be that bad. <laughs> Out of, top, yeah. Top ten. Yep. <laughs> Out of ten. Inside. Yeah. So, um... I'll just go ahead and say, Western, if we win tonight, we will lose the next one. Just that'll be my loser. My loser will be against with us against FAU. I mean, just so people who don't have the bracket in front of them, we play UTEP, and this is we record this on Wednesday night. You'll see it the day of, long day after. But first game is against UTEP, and then winner of that game gets FAU. So that's not something to look forward to, even if we do win. Because it's an gone. iron owl curtain. How about that? <laughs> a Basically. nice big curtain. Uh, and it's going to be tough for us to do anything. We haven't done anything against FAU all year. Um, so besides Rick Stansberry's mom, I'm pretty sure the rest of us are, have come to the conclusion he's probably going to lose his job. Probably. I mean, you would assume so. Um, he has a lot of moms on Facebook, then. Yes. And Jake Omer does, too. Um, they got his back. <laughs> but, um, so, my thing is, is who do we think, or who do we think Todd is going to go with next? Matt, what are your thoughts? Oh, who do I think Todd's going to go with, or who do I think we should we should go with? That's... Either way. Oh, boy. Um, well, I know you hear a lot of a lot of different names people are throwing out there from, like, you know, da- Danish Felton and, you know, basically every uh, – John Oldham. Chris and Mack. Go. Rick Patino, Right, uh, yeah. <laughs> Did you hear all the old older crowd, like, throwing out former Western coaches' names and stuff? I know – um, I think it's it's looking like it's you know there's a few guys that are really serious. Um, I posted on Red Out about five names <clears throat> um, that look like they're out there. Um, where is it? Anyway, it's um, let's see, Will Wade. Um, yes, Darren Horn. Yes, I've heard both of those names. Chris Beard's been out there some, but I don't I don't know if we're 
really in the running for him. Uh, Chris Mack <laughs> and <laughs> hello, Abby. Uh, I've heard Spradlin from uh, Moorhead too, so a few different names there. But I don't know. I honestly like I. I would prefer. I feel like we've got a, a strong enough list that I, I really don't lean towards going to someone like Will Wade, who has a serious pass issue. Okay. Um, I'm not a huge like like you can still find some people that are really quality candidates that don't have serious baggage. Um, okay. And so, so who, there's a concern. Who are you thinking is the uh, the candidate with the least concern? Then I would like. I would like to see Chris Mack, I think, would be, mm-hmm. well, would be a, a good one. That's a clean guy, nice guy, whatever. And and I'm not looking for, you know, goody two shoes or whatever, but he's a he's a he doesn't have any baggage. Well, um, I'm gonna pop your bubble. Well, whatever. I'm gonna pop your bubble. I've got friends in Louisville who know him and they've said he's done with coaching. Well so really? Chris Mack is out, yes. Well, you know what? You could have told me that before I just proclaimed See, that publicly <laughs> upon the Red Out podcast. If Tom Brady can change his mind and come out of retirement, then so can Chris Mack. Right. He Maybe he'll money. have a garbled uh, phone call that they confuse everything. Him and Todd are talking, and uh, Todd just hires him and announces <laughs> it, just like him and Gronk did, mm, yes. basically. Um, I also have a friend who's talked um, – who who's – a friend of a friend of a friend, and they said Rick Pitino is going to stay and wants to stay in the New York area. Yeah, that makes sense. Better Italian restaurants up there. You know what? And Just, more mafia but, stuff up there too. Yeah, I mean darker corners for him to sit with lady friends. You know, it's whatever. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Sticky tables, whatever. Um. So in my mind, I'm thinking that the biggest two is going to be Darren Horn and Will Wade. Yeah, that's pretty much what I've heard. I mean, those are the biggest front runners. Now, who Todd's looking at, I have no idea. Um, but from my thought process, um, Darren Horn has the resume that Todd's going to want to love. Is Todd's going to love? It's just um, the fact that he's already been here and he would be coming back. I mean, he's it, been here it, twice. He was, he was also basically Stansberry's path. Before Stansbury, except he finally came through in his fifth year. Yeah. Like he was on the path of getting himself fired because everybody was getting frustrated. And then he lucked into having like this incredible roster in 2008 and made that run. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it wasn't for that run either, then we probably wouldn't even be having this discussion about him. But I mean, I just don't think he's like a super sexy hire as far as like, wow, this is someone that I can't wait to see us have again. I mean, the Conference USA should be weaker next year with all the mess going on with New Mexico State's team. And of course, us losing a lot of the teams that consistently beat us out of the tournament every single year. I feel like we definitely have more of a shot with FAU leaving and UAB leaving and North Texas and losing all of those people that have pretty much kept us from getting to the NCAA tournament under Stensbury. So I think that whoever gets hired for next year. I mean, it, it's just all about it. Can they bring in anyone with them? Like any decent, good transfers? I mean, high school recruiting is still pretty difficult depending on where you're at and if they have any Kentucky ties to begin with. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm interested to see what direction we'll go. I mean, I feel like Will Wade would definitely be more capable of bringing in some bigger names and better transfers immediately. Yeah. To, along with him, like if he were to come to WKU, I don't think Darren Horn's really going to do that. No. I mean, if you look at the type of players on his roster, it's not like very high level recruits, if I'm being honest. But I mean, they're good I mean, enough Northern to make Kentucky. the NCAA tournament. I mean, they're good enough to make the tournament. They beat a Power Five team this year or a ranked team this year, or something like that. They beat a good team. <laughs> better I mean, than we did. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's better than we did. I mean, Honestly, at this point, I would rather have someone that can take any player and make them coach and become a team and make them better than have someone like Stansberry that can get a four or five star recruit and not know what to do with them when they get here. Yeah, so that's yeah. kind of how I feel at this point. I did. I, it was interesting. You talk about Darren Horn not being that interesting. Where I was talking on Red Out with some people and on the Twitter page and stuff, and um, 
is interesting talking about the possibility that he could bring in Anthony Winchester and potentially uh, David Boyden onto his staff. Yeah, and those would be yeah, good I mean, names. You could have, have yeah, you could have like Western. a legit like Hilltopper legend kind of coaching staff, which would I think people would be at least at first excited about it. And I think they're those two are very good assistants. I think. Yeah, I think it'd be interesting to see if that ever came to fruition if he was hired. Um, I, I mean, honestly, I think I think Horn's the leader in this in this. Uh, merry-go-round of coaching decisions. Um, I do think, like you said, I don't think he's going to have the possible transfers like like Wade might. Um, I could definitely see Wade pulling a Deion Sanders and being like, let's go, guys, and just pull up like half the roster and, uh, you know, and just load them up. Um, I could see that. I mean, I don't – I don't. of course, I don't know him, so, you know, I have no idea, but um, – the problem, my, my problem I'm seeing with Horn, and I mean, it's not necessarily a problem, but he's a local guy. He was born in Glasgow. Um, he, he started out his career assistant in 1995, uh, got the head coaching job in 2003 to 2008, and uh, he went to South Carolina for a bit. He went to Texas as an assistant, and then uh, he's at NKU. And, you know, he's made a couple of turn- tournament appearances. He won the Horizon League twice. And, you know, he's... I've got some stats up here on our YouTube that you can check out. Um, I will say one of the downsides is one of his kids plays for UK. So, you know, mixed allegiance is there. Just saying. Um, nothing. Quiet from the P- peanut gallery. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um <laughs> <laughs> um well okay so the other thing is i was looking at will wade stats um he's a little younger he's about 10 years younger than 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 uh, darren horn uh he's been coaching since 2005 he was an assistant first head coaching job was uh chattanooga uh obviously his previous job was lsu um but my thing is is we hired we hired bobby petrino to p- coach football I don't see the issue with the quote, you know, the risky hire or any of that with Will Wade when you got Bobby Petrino who's having motorcycle wrecks with his secretary. I mean, just saying. Now, is he is he clean? I have no idea, but he's going to possibly he could possibly bring, you know, some D1 legit D1 players to Bowling Green and put us in the tournament next year. And we could go pretty good in the tournament. I don't know. I mean, the thing with Wade is that a lot of the stuff he got in trouble for is okay now, like with all the NIL stuff and things like that. I mean, the only thing that makes him different than any other Power 5 coach is that he got caught. Yeah. Well, my thing is with that is if he's willing to do something that's so obviously wrong, what else is he also willing to do? Well, I mean, I mean, I understand that the stuff he did is not illegal anymore. But what other corners is he willing to cut? What what kind of stuff could we possibly get into? Unless he learned his lesson and he figured out, okay, I, I shouldn't do this anymore. I shouldn't break rules. But he's also a grown man. He's got his own beliefs and everything. Is he really just going to magically turn around and never cut a corner ever again? I don't. I don't know. I'm just. I mean, I see a risk. I mean, well, you're, okay. well you're an insurance agent. That makes sense. Um, you see risks, um, but I will say Wade has no wife or family listed on his wiki page, so he's definitely dedicated to the game. Um, where Darren Horn has a wife and kids, I'm just saying. Right? Oh, well, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, what is your point there, Devin? I don't even know what you're going with. Is that he's a good married thing, to the game thing? of football. He's I mean, married. Basketball. Thank you, Jared. Basketball, Thank you. Sorry. He's married to the game of basketball. <laughs> there is no distractions in his life. Um, Just as long as he I doesn't mean, do like our players on road he trips. He will wade into the game. waters of bachelorism. <laughs> <laughs> Matt just stepped all over your joke, Jared, but that was great. <laughs> he's going to be hitting up Tinder on the road at FAU. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, oh, you're talking God. about coaches cheating. Like, look at Bill Belichick. 
Jared's favorite coach, nemesis yeah. coach, whatever. I mean, if you look at him, what's his? What's the difference? He cuts corners all the time. You know, I mean, that's the thing. Almost every single major coach in yeah. college sports has definitely done some shady stuff to get some good players, and probably yeah, yes. us included. Do you think we got all of our high level recruits like Bassey and everything else? Like Charles Lee? Bassey is the key word there. Yeah. He, yes. We hired his AAU coach, and you know that was a big thing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, people do it all the time, but it doesn't mean it's right. And another thing, you want to talk about recruiting, look at football recruiting. I absolutely abhor when people sign for, you know, like football signees or whatever, or they, you know, they declare for whoever, because you can't count on it. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. football coaches will swoop in, and it'll be like, you know... Jared, you know, Jared Rochduser has committed to Western Kentucky, and then all of a sudden somebody else swoops in, and you're like, oh, nope, he's changed his commitment to. And a kid could change his commitment like three times before he ever signs. Yeah. And it's really just hard to do. You know, you just can't. Yeah. And I think we do know that they all break the rules a little bit. Yes. Um, you know, like, well, I mean, I remember stuff like back in the equipment room, you know, Coach Woody's like giving out equipment and stuff, and whatever and it's like dude that's a that's a violation in itself like you're <laughs> get that man a hat coach you just broke NCAA rules like you just <laughs> left and right you just who well, goes okay and it's like you know okay let me tell you they have let me tell you a story let me tell you a story I knew a player back in the day um that he was staying over the summer he had classes and stuff and I think duck was closed or what they call the student union center or whatever uh, was closed. Um, so the guys went to their position coach at the time and they're like, coach, we're hungry. We ain't got no food, blah, 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 blah. So the coach went into his house and just started giving them food. That is an NCAA violation. Yep. He's not supposed to be giving them food like that, but what are you going to do? You got your, I mean, you've got athletes coming to you. And I mean, probably some of these kids look at these guys like father figures almost. Mm -hmm. And you know, they're like, uh, you know, and vice versa. And they're like, hey, I'm hungry. Well, Bruce you know what? Got, I break the rules. I don't care. Bruce Pearl got slammed for having a barbecue. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'm I'm not con- – I don't know the specifics of uh, Wade's issue, but, I mean, what is, what is this going to be for him, honestly? This is going to be a Petrino year or two where he comes in and – he does really well with Western, and then he gets swiped again. I'm going to say within the next couple of years, wherever he ends up, whether it's Western or McNeese State, which is another thing I saw on Twitter that he could be going there. Hello, hello, hello. Um, so you know they could possibly he could end up there, and I'm going to say within a couple of years he's gone. He's going back to a Power Five school. So yeah, I think I mean, you take advantage of it. See, this is the thing. I remember I was in FAC on campus when I got the message on my phone saying the WKU had hired Bobby Petrino. And the first words out of my mouth were, this man will not be here for more than one year. And yep. guess what? That's what happened. So I think, I mean, I, I think I everybody like, said that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, with someone like Will Wade, I mean, I feel like if he has a really solid first year, I mean, it could maybe just be one year and gone, honestly. Yeah, that's why you try to get them to, to pay a bunch of buyout money, and then we're financially exactly. stable. Yeah. Yep. Um, but as bad as it sounds, I feel like I feel like this is this is a Todd Stewart playbook. Darren Horn has so many ties and things with Western; he's going to go with it, just like just like uh, it's a money Billy Taggart or uh, even Mike Sanford. Yeah. Mike Sanford was kind of the downhill side of things because Sanford was an assistant here. He was a younger coach. I mean, Tyson um, Helton, too. Yeah, Tyson Helton. Mm-hmm. But two of the three paid off. So, I mean, I could have told you Sanford wasn't going to work out. I mean, hopefully whoever he decides. Bro, uh, hey, bro, don't talk shit, bro. Come on, bro. <laughs> Dude, come on. I could have told you. <laughs> I knew that it was. I was like, I hope this guy's grown up because he was, he was not <laughs> mature at all when he was at Western, and I'm sure he, Dude, he was like same he was like our age when he coached at Western. I know. So, but anyway, I, he whatever. Um, but I just hope that Todd 
whoever he hires makes it just makes a good decision. I hope it works out. I mean, Horn is not like an awful hire, but it's not like a Jesus. you know like mind blowing incredible move either. Yes, you know, it's no. Darren Horn is just a slightly it's above. Not me. an exciting hire for me, as far as I'm concerned. Um, yes, there is someone knocking at my door. You are not exaggerating. Do you, do you keep your child in a cage? Right. I should. Room? I should keep her. <laughs> <laughs> she's knocking because she's like, "I need daddy." Um. Oh Jesus! One second. Um, oh, make me get the shot collar. <laughs> let me get this squirt bottle on you. What are you doing? You say hi. Daddy. Yeah, back in your cage, girlfriend. Go back in there and play with Gaga. Oh Jesus! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Dang. So anyway, since we're derailed, um. Bye. 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 <laughs> you say hi, Matt. Hi, Matt. Hi, Jared. Oh. Hi, Dad. <laughs> hi, Abby. Dad. Oh, that's adorable. That was cute. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dude, I think our ratings to go, tops? go up. Go Tops. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's yes. right. Uh, okay, you go see Gaga, okay? I'll charge the iPad. Hi. Uh, Hi. Okay. Are you one of those iPad parents, Devin? You just give your no, iPad actually, iPad 12 hours a day. No, and the bad thing is, is when the electricity went off the, the last week, I didn't know where it was to, so she could watch something when the, when the power's all out. <laughs> yes, I have a band-aid on. Um... So, um, back to, uh, back to talking Western. We're waiting um, for horn. Yes. I was, I was trying to bad mouth Darren Horn, but, um, honestly, I feel like that's what's going to happen. And, um, can you shut the door? Cause Cooper won't stop barking. Um, I feel like that's what, I think that's what's going to happen. Um, so my thought process is if you don't like it, um, you need to call this number. I've got it right here. Oh God! You... <laughs> no, no I'll dox your cousin on the I'm podcast. Not, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna dox. I'm not gonna dox uh, Todd or or uh, or or Matt. That's what I was going with. I was gonna send. Oh, it. I was about to come on, man. <laughs> I do have one question though for both of you that I just thought of that I'm really interested in. So we we definitely think it could be between those two guys, but what are the odds that it's someone like out of left field or someone that we haven't really thought about at all? Like, we'd how what's the possibility of that that Todd could do? Maybe find some random person that's okay. still really good that uh, we haven't thought of. Uh, hmm. yeah. Joby Hall, as he did. <laughs> <laughs> We'll just resurrect EA Diddle. Um, <laughs> um, but no, they, uh, so, um, oh my gosh. Okay, so maybe I can get my mother to watch my kid for just a minute. Um, so anyway, uh, I, I don't think, I, I think it's, I think Darren Horns, it's the Telegraph. I think, I think that's where we're looking. I think um, if Todd Stewart's the quarterback, he's just looking straight at Darren Horn the entire time. And I think Will Wade is standing 80 yards downfield with his arms flapping, going, throw it to me, throw it to me. But nothing's going to come I'll his way. I'll give you money. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you an NCAA tournament appearance that you haven't seen in forever. That's <clears> all <throat> we want at this point. Do you know hey, what's uh, insane? We haven't gone to the NCAA tournament as representatives of Conference USA. Like, it's been that long. It's been 10 years to this week, pretty much, was the last time that we went to the NCAA tournament. I was a freshman in college, and yeah. I got to go to the selections Sunday party we had in Diddle where we saw where we were going to be playing Kansas. And we almost won, but, I mean, that, of yeah, course. We only lost by seven. Yeah, I mean, it was a close game. If George Fan mm -hmm. didn't foul out, I think we could have actually had a chance. But we never had an answer for Withy. But, I mean, it's whatever. But, yeah, I mean, it's just been so long. Like, the towel rack has not existed since we made an NCAA tournament. Like, we've tweeted bowl games, but we've never got to tweet a WKU NCAA tournament men's basketball game. Oh. That is so sad, too. Yeah. God, Jared, so I just got, like, mega depressed. Yeah, he just sucked all the air out of the room. <laughs> um, I will That's say why we it. need change. That's why we need change. Oh, we definitely yeah. need change. And I think change is coming. The only ones who think otherwise are Rick Stansberry and his mom. But here's a um, question, though, real quick: Is Rick Stansberry the coach, or is this the last podcast we do with Rick Stansberry as our head coach? Most likely, I'm going to say next week he'll be gone. If he doesn't win the tournament, he's gone. Bye. 
if so you what if we yeah. get to the conference title game and lose by the most catastrophic fashion you've ever seen? That's what I'm scared of. But what happens if FAU gets COVID and Western just automatically advances? <laughs> oh, Lord. I honestly uh, think we could be FAU to be all, all dead serious. I'm not saying that we will. I think FAU's playing well, but I think if we would show up and all that. You're, you're hoping for an Angels in the Outfield scenario, dude, I'm guessing. No, I'm serious. Like we, we were closer <laughs> to FAU than you are giving us credit for. Okay. They, it's a it's a decent matchup for us in terms of their personnel. They're they're not that big. They have the one guy a seven one, um, you know. I, I, honestly, and we may struggle to get past UTEP, but I, I really think that we we match up okay against them just because of our size. Acott was out for one of the games against FAU, and we could have really used him to try to post up on their smaller players. So. If I'm, I'm UTEP's not coach, we're gonna win, but if, okay. if I'm UTEP's coach, I'm going through my entire roster, walk-ons and everyone, just fouling sharp the entire game. Not, you know what I'm doing? You know what I'm doing? I'm gonna be like, hey, how many of y'all can shoot the three? You're all going in. All five of you. Whoever <laughs> shoots the three, you got it. Let's go. <laughs> no points on the inside. Nope. We're just all shooting threes. three all night. Yep. Um that I might mean it work. It, it's <laughs> There are stranger things that have happened in in basketball, um, especially if, you know in Western. I mean, I'm not saying it's not a possibility, but I'm going to say Western against UTEP. Western has a. I'm going to say we've got a seven out of ten chance of beating them. That's about right. Yeah. Now FAU, I'm going to say they've got a nine out of ten chance of beating us, or eight out of ten. Eight out of ten games, FAU is going to beat us at least. Does that seem fair? Yeah. Oh, That's let me see right. what the uh, let me see if there's a BPI for tonight. I'll look at that really quick. <sighs> those guys are killing me at the, over there. Those interns. Um, yep. Those. Yeah. Oh, we have a fifty-six point four percent chance to win. Uh, UTEP is forty-three point six. We're two and a half point favorites. Did I say? What did that I say? Line's gone down. Say That's or seventy. I have mm-hmm. to go back and listen. You said um, you said seventy and eighty. You said seventy yeah, percent. Yeah. We beat UTEP. 80%. That's not, that's not too bad off from what the analytics are showing. I mean, only a fifty six percent chance, according to ESPN, for us to win the very first round of the conference tournament is pathetic. It really yeah. is, but but we're ten games out of first too, so we haven't even won twenty games this year. Yeah, and that's kind of the benchmark too. And the fact that we have a losing record, this was something I deep dove into. But the, usually whenever we have a losing record in conference is when a coaching change happens. Like you can look mm-hmm. at like Ray Harper's last year. He had a losing record in Conference USA. Kim McDonald, he had a losing coaching record with uh, Conference USA before he got canned. And it's like that with Stansbury now. I think we're 8-12 and 12 is what we finished in Conference USA. So, yeah, something's mm-hmm. got to happen. How funny would it be? I would love to see this, but there are the marketing and all those people at Western are horrible, so they wouldn't do this. But how funny would it be to have like have like Darren Horn getting ready to sign his contract in front of the media and everything, and then all of a sudden like Stone Cold Steve Austin's music kicks on, and then Will Wade walks in and like slams him through a table and signs it and walks away. <laughs> <laughs> they need to do it WWE style. I would love that. Exactly, dude. Yeah, I would make it like it. a money in the bank where the contract <laughs> is hanging above the ring and you have to get on the ladder and grab it. <laughs> <laughs> Cage they, match. Will Wade, Darren Horn. This I think I have that 65-year-old uh, assistant from Kansas get up there too. <laughs> <laughs> they have a Royal Rumble. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, I, tonight, what are your thoughts, Jared? What are you thinking? Western's going to, how's Western going to do against UTEP? At this point, I would absolutely love to just see this absolute atrocity of a season be put out of its misery and us just go out now. That way we can go ahead and hire whichever coach we want to get. But I mean, realistically, I, we've swept UTEP this entire season I mean, usually beating a team three times in one season can be hard if they're somewhat decent. But UTEP, I mean, we literally just played them like a week ago. Yeah. So they're still pretty fresh on our minds and everything. And 
I mean, the, I, I think we'll win tonight, but there's absolutely – if we were to beat FAU, then – that would be absolutely massive. But the thing is, is that even if we were to pull a big upset, we still have to win four games in four days. And we know how this team is as far as the conference tournament goes. Like we run out of gas playing three games in three days and crash and burn by the time we get to the conference title game. So having a whole extra game to lose rest compared to whoever else we might be playing in a title game. I mean, I think it's way too insurmountable for this team, but I mean, I feel like we win one lose after to FAU. I think so too, Matt. What are your thoughts? I know you're, I mean, you're snorting the Western crack, so you tell um, me. <laughs> dude, whatever, man. I just, I mean, it drives me crazy to say that we can't do it or that's not happening or whatever because it could happen. It could happen. There no is matter. a statistical chance. Yeah, the probability says otherwise. But I will, I will give you. There are stranger things that have happened, but Maybe winning tonight is a, is a pretty good chance. Yeah. No, I. I think we'll win tonight, and I think we'll lose against FAU. That's what I feel, and I think we'll probably lose by a lot to FAU. But I also think that you don't know how people are going to show up in the tournament. You know, they might all come together and figure something out. One thing I was looking at, ACOT, uh, when he was with Boise, he played well late in the year, um, pulled together. He scored double digits every game when they were going to the tournament and everything and had nice performances, so – if he, if he shows up and really plays well, I think it could be an X factor that makes us a, at least a different level of, you know, close to average in the conference or slightly above average because he's somebody that's completely underperformed. And so if he could show up and do what he was supposed to do from the beginning of the season and maybe have another person – kind of go off, I think it gives us a chance, again, definitely against Utah, but also FAU. But that's what we need is kind of some extraordinary performances or some people that should have been doing this all year finally do what they were supposed to. I believe there is an old country thing. I think there is an old country saying back home that if a frog had wings, he wouldn't bump his ass. And I think that applies here. <laughs> If Western was better, they would I beat it. That's probably the most and, Allen County thing I've ever heard you say. You've never heard that? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that, oh, that sounds I like save that. those. I save those. So just so you know, just so we have. Uh, For such uh, a time as this. Huh? Yes, just so we Thank have you. those. Um, but um, I, I would like to see. I'm like Jared. I would like to see Western win, play FAU, and just get knocked out and be, you know, because you're going to play the top seed, you know. That's not a dishonorable loss, but to lose to UTEP, you know, you just kind of sum up the season they're, when you they're three UTEP. and ten away from home. Like they're an awful road team. I really, God, what yeah. a nightmare if they would lose that game. And I definitely, I still want to pull for them. Like I, I don't want to see them lose. But yeah, it's just kind of sucks there. Do we know how many WKU people are even going to go to the tournament this year? Because, I mean, we know that the Lady Tops obviously have a lot better chance of doing something. Well, Ralph Dillahay and then this one guy on Twitter are the only ones I've got confirmed. So, (laughs) at least three. (laughs) Three Hilltopper fans. Go go. Tops. (laughs) I will say, um, I saw some of the pictures from the game last week against UTEP Western. And that was the saddest arena I have ever seen in my entire life. Did you see? Did you, I mean, obviously, Matt, you saw some of those, but like it was so empty. It looked like a scrimmage. Am I wrong? No, it was, and I can't believe they announced that it was thirty-one hundred. There is no way. There's no there way thirty-one hundred in that freaking arena. I, yeah, it was. It was I'll frustrating. Try. I'll send those to you, Jared, just so you can see them, because mm-hmm. it was. You just go, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, oh, do you know what would be fitting? Like in the same way that like senior night for football, like Mike Sanford's last game was against UTEP. What if Stansberry's last game is against UTEP? That would be Ooh. ironic. Yeah. Maybe UTEP is the coach killer. <laughs> Don't lose to UTEP. <laughs> <laughs> At least not anymore. They were good our first year in Conference USA in basketball. Like they were phenomenal and they've been downhill ever since. Texted yeah. that to you, Jared. That's one picture that they sent us. Um, I'll try and post that to the uh, to our uh, to the YouTube video so you all can see that as well. Um, oh, if, God. 
<laughs> is it not sad? It's no, really it, sad. Devin, it was everyone dressed like the seat night. You forgot. Oh, yep. You got me there. <laughs> Good God. Yeah, everybody wore the same Orange color seat. shirt with a little silver thing on it, so it looked like the seat. Yep. Yeah, there is no... Well, I will say, there's a possibility that everybody sat on the other side of the arena. <laughs> Still, though, that's terrible... <laughs> Oh, Three thousand people the on the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, so shifting to the more uh, exciting basketball, I guess, is Lady Tops. Yeah. Buddy. So who are they playing? They, they got get, UAB. They get the winner of UAB and uh, North Texas. Let me see if I can find the graphic for that, because. Um, um, it looks like ESPN's got UAB beat North Texas. Did they? Yes, okay. they beat wow. them. I hadn't looked at the scores. They played yet. at Let they played at two thirty uh, March eighth, which wow. is today as we're recording. Uh, they beat them seventy five seventy one. I like to be the one to tell Matt things. This is so fun. Yeah, I agree normally it's the baby. other way. <laughs> Okay, yeah. now as we record this, um, the video and everything will drop, and Western will play uh, UAB at 2.30 on the 9th, which is Thursday. Um, that is huge so. for us, in my opinion, because we lost to North Texas. Okay. We we got down 10 uh, against them on, quote-unquote, senior night, even though we don't have any seniors. Um, we had two managers that were seniors, but anyway. Um <laughs> That's so kind cool. of actually a, honored them and gave them a basketball. It was cool. Good well, that is, I mean, that's not, that is cool. Something. Support yeah. staff. Yes. Um, but anyway, man, I, that's huge for us because North Texas was a just a tough matchup for us. They were really long and big. Um, and we're not, um, <laughs> not, not big at all. We don't have any size. So we we blew we're out shabby. UAB at their place by like 20, it was like 18 or something. Um, a couple weeks ago, so I, I like that matchup a lot better. UAB is talented, though. They were supposed to be one of the best teams in the conference, so you know they could pull something out here in the in the uh, in the conference tournament, but I doubt it. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, that, I'm thrilled with the the fact that UAB we're playing UAB and not North Texas. I was gonna say um, Western or the. The conference standings has UAB at like second to last. Oh yeah, yeah they, they are five of fifteen in conference. They're fourteen of sixteen overall, and yeah. they are thirteen games back. Yeah, look at that math though. They were nine and one coming into conference, and then they end up last. I don't. Yeah, like, it's inexplicable. And they they played a decent schedule and stuff, and they were pretty good. And then they just it became a nightmare for them. So I don't know what happened, but I, I'm I'm thrilled that we're playing them and not North Texas. Trying to see if so, I can find a graphic for this conference tournament, but I guess not. Um, it's on, but probably on conferenceusa.com. Yeah, that would be a good place to look, wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> Go to but, championships uh, and then women's basketball. No, the um, no joke. The um, it looks like uh, MTSU is going to be playing Charlotte. Yeah. So uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Is that the women? The yes. That's women. Okay, because the okay because the men are playing Charlotte too. Um, are they really? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, Charlotte beat FIU, and so I mean, middle middle's the stone cold favorite on that side of the bracket. Like UTEP is decent, so is Law Tech, but I mean, um, and Charlotte honestly is well coached, so I wouldn't put it past somebody to beat middle, but I think middle's. Pretty much gonna make it through that side, yeah. And then on the other side, you've got Western and UAB, and then UTSA Rice. I think, I think Rice is playing really well, and I'm kind of they they beat the Lady Tops uh, by like 18 at home at Diddle um, a few weeks ago or this last week, so uh, or two weeks ago. So I'm kind of nervous about that. Um, but I think if we can, if we can just win this first game, uh, in terms of like how happy I am with the season and stuff, I'll be okay. Um, but obviously, if we could make the 
championship game and take our chances against middle or whoever's left, I, I'd be, you know, super the, thrilled with. So, the so tournament. looking at the, so I don't want to cut you off, but looking at the yeah. bracket, um, Western is the two seed. Um, so we've got Rice as the other big one, and Middle's on the other side of the bracket with UTEP. So um, we would technically not face Middle until the championship, Conference USA championship. So And, and they're ranked. So Yes, super they're good. ranked 25th. Yeah. Yeah, super good team. And, and we the main thing, the whole time during basketball season, during the Conference USA slate or whatever, I was saying, let's just avoid Middle. And we did. Yeah. And now we're it's either us or Rice, basically, I think, that are gonna make it through um in the championship game. So I'm I just yeah, really I was gonna hope say, we don't screw it up against UAB. <laughs> that well, would be a nightmare. Well, UTSA FAU are gonna be playing Rice, which I I'm I would assume they would have already updated this if they've played. Yeah, U UTSA beat FAU by one. Okay, okay. So they haven't updated it. Okay. <laughs> So Rice is going to be playing UTSA on court B of the curtain. Uh, Western is going to be playing UAB on court A of that curtain. And then, um, obviously, MTSU has Charlotte tomorrow at 11 a.m. And then UTEP, Law Tech play at 11.30 on the other side of the curtain. So, so one side of the curtain, you got one game. And on the other side, you got another game. Um, so we'll just have to check it out and see, hopefully. Um, let's see. Yeah, so by next week we'll know if Western's uh, how how our chances went. And Matt will be updating that on the 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 tweeters on the or towel rack or the red out, whichever. It's gonna um, be towel so. rack, right? Well, whatever. Um, <laughs> so just follow either one; it's fine. I mean, you don't um, have to tweet much for the guys. I feel like we'll be one and done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Um, either way. Um, okay, so where's my notes? Um, so, Jared, Lady Tops basketball, what are you thinking? I mean, getting that two seed was massive. Like, especially just the way that we were able to do good in conference when we started pretty bad is good at this point. I mean, get, UAB is definitely the team you would rather have. I, I feel like that's going to be an easier path moving forward. Um, I mean, that's the thing under Collins, though. I mean, he hasn't really proven like a whole lot in the conference tournament yet. I mean, this would be a great time for him to prove that we can get over the hump and at least get to the championship round, hopefully win. But, I mean, at least try to get that far. I think that would be really solid. But, I mean, whether or not that will happen, I don't know. I mean, like Matt was saying, we, we're not a very big team <laughs> size-wise. I don't yeah. know if that could be a disadvantage or not. But, I mean, but we have a shot for sure. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, I, de I think there's definitely a possibility for us to do well. Um, so, I mean, I think so I think far, we could easily make it to the championship game, but go ahead, Matt. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, so far, the first two games that have been played on our side of the bracket have gone the way we wanted them to. So, okay. you know, I mean, I think FAU beating UTSA would basically guarantee that Rice made it to the semis. So, at least give them a tougher game, if not – you know, I had somebody that was tagging us on Twitter on a Red Out, I think, and, and Tower Rack, I believe. And uh, they were saying that they thought UTSA was kind of a dark horse. Um, so maybe they could beat Rice. Rice has been inconsistent this year. So yeah. maybe Rice will just have a, a tough game. And UTSA would be the dream matchup in the semis versus Rice. I think Rice is somebody that we'd probably lose to. Okay. Um, but it would be a close game. We split with them, but I think they're playing a lot better. And, I mean, okay. obviously UAB beating North Texas was huge for us to not have to play a team that we lost to and yeah. really struggled against both games. So I think it's shaping up well. Um, we've just got to execute. And, and uh, hopefully it's time for Collins to, to do something great as the head coach. Yep. We're going to have a David versus Goliath coming up if we make it to the championship. So – Hopefully, uh, Western's girls will get in, uh, you know, MTSU's head. Um, and we've, we've been competitive, if we talk about getting to the championship. We've been competitive with them. We, we, we've taken a lead in both games and then kind of melted down um, right after. So, I mean, we have the ability that, that we can play with them. Um, yeah. You know, 
they're, it's certainly not hopeless. Um, and they've had some, they had a couple stinkers in the middle of conference play that were total head scratchers. I think they lost to the Florida schools or something just randomly. And those are their only two losses, but, um, yeah, they're they're pretty solid, and for whatever reason, we have trouble with them. So hopefully, they'll lose to somebody else. Well, um, I mean, my thought is is I'm hoping the girls, you know, go out there, start some fights, you know, kind of get in their heads, and then you know, just win in overtime. You know, yeah, this is not sure. as long unless they're like the SIU player in the uh, OVC tournament, just totally swinging at somebody. <laughs> that one was like, yeah, you sent me. Yeah, yeah, I saw that clip, and I had never figured oh, out yeah. like. What was wrong with the other guy? Yeah, I don't know what he was doing to him. To it's, he, I mean, he's definitely instigating it, but I mean, he got clocked, and yeah, that was that was insane. <laughs> um, so softball news. Let's see how Lady Tops are doing in softball. Yeah, I have no idea. I haven't checked. Sorry. <laughs> Thirteen to was, six. We'll honestly, I was um, I was going through and getting ready for. Um, Okay. I was getting ready for our coaching discussion, and I was typing all that up, and then I kept getting texts from Matt. It's been eleven minutes, so I had to hustle up. And you, you told me it was going to be six, and it was eleven, <laughs> and I'm trying to get home to watch the tops likely lose, and <laughs> it's just frustrating. Uh, so, um, do you want me to right. go for it, buddy? All right. You yeah, if you want to go for it, you got it. I okay, was just I trying to pull up softball. Okay. Uh, they had one game canceled on the third. That was when all the I think it was when all the power outages happened okay. on Friday, and then um, it, they had the Hilltopper Spring playing, and so they had a couple games on March the fourth, and a couple games on March the fifth, and it looks like we played Akron, beat them three to two, and then followed up playing Evansville. That might have been a makeup game. I don't know. Um, beat them. Yeah, I think they were scheduled to play them on the third. But go ahead. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, because it said the Evansville game was canceled on Friday, so they probably just doubled up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they beat Evansville nine nothing, and then they beat Akron five to nothing, and then beat Austin P eight to one. So now they're thirteen and six overall, and I think we've got one loss against you know the mid major level. Um, so I think. I think they're looking like they're doing pretty well. Pretty, I mean, I you know I think Western is all of a sudden becoming a female-driven sports school. Mm-hmm. We got Lady Pops doing well. We got volleyball doing well. Today is uh, International Pops Women's Day. Day, and yes, so absolutely. there we go. Yeah, shout out, ladies, to the ladies, we salute you. Definitely, definitely support the Lady Tops and, and ladies in general, I guess. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I mean. I would like to see Western's girls continue this uh, this play and see how everything goes. You know, when do we start conference play for them? March seventeenth against UTEP. Uh, okay. In El Paso. Okay. So okay. We got a couple. That'll be a nice one. one. Yeah, just kick it off with a with a bang. Um, that's a long trip. Uh, but we've got EKU yeah. uh, on the eighth, and then Miami of Ohio series. Um, at home on uh, March 11th and 12th. And then you got Indiana on at home on March 13th. So that'd be a good game to get out and, and check out, uh, get a power yeah. five win at home. And then, and then comes UTEP after that on March 17th. That's hey, that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah. Like Matt said, there is a double header on the 11th though. Mm-hmm. Just in case you missed that with the Miami, Ohio. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, I that's uh, yeah, that'll be People exciting. Know, Devin. Hey, go support the Lady Tops. They're doing well. Take your child, pervert or otherwise, let them watch the game. Um, <laughs> uh, Devin, so, have you seen any deals on trench coats, man? I've been looking around. I, you know what? I was thinking about it this morning. I was like, we should look into getting a trench coat sponsor. <laughs> that would be the greatest thing. You can try the flea market this weekend. <laughs> I need to I need yeah. to reach out to some trench coat selling stores <laughs> surplus <laughs> I depots. I don't even know trench coat surplus <laughs> trench coat your, 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 your trench coat <laughs> supply store uh, uh, yes uh, so baseball I know baseball's doing better um, I saw some 
couple little tweets. Uh, Raritan, 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 Raritan. Raritan. I, think I think it's Raritan actually. It is is Raritan? it Raritan? Yeah, that's what the that's what they say on the radio. So hmm. That doesn't mean it. it's right, but okay, I'm good with this. This is the South. Um, we say what we want. Yep, that's right. Yep, mispronunciations and all. Um, America, Jack. So Western played uh, played Northern Illinois uh, in the series last week. They had a double hitter on the fourth, and uh, they ended up beating Northern Illinois in both of those games. First one was nine to eight, and the second one was seven to five. And then they played them on the fifth for another double header. Uh, Northern Illinois lost. Oh no, sorry. Northern Illinois ended up winning the first one, eighteen to ten. Good God! And the second one, Western lost again, uh, six to five. And then Western had a ten run rule against Belmont on the seventh. So congratulations, guys, doing pretty good. Uh, baseball side of things too. Yeah, that is. It's the best record since uh, Pulaski's first year, and basically, if they go two and three the next uh, five games, they'll be they'll be on track to do better than he was, um, even in his first year. And we'll have to look back and see when the last time they were better than this record. But it's yeah, uh, I mean, this tired. is the first time a coach has done this since uh, uh, EA Diddle. So I mean, that's great. That's good to hear. <laughs> I have no idea. I just made that set up. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, he coached everything at one point, I think. He he did. He coached coached basketball and football, I know. I don't know if he did baseball. Listen, we need to let Travis Hudson do that. Let him coach coach. everything. Everything. I've been saying that. That would be really funny, actually. You know, we're talking coaching earlier. That would be really funny if, you know, Todd Stewart gets up there and announces the next head basketball coach for men's, and it's like Travis Hudson. And we're all Just like, hey, up. what? Travis no one would I... object to that. <laughs> I wouldn't. I'd be like, sure, let's do it. I know he'll make him win. Yeah. Um, so, yes, we'll be back next week talking uh, conference. Hopefully we'll be talking about the women going to the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, a lot of exciting things going along Western, and maybe we'll have some coaching news, some definite coaching news instead of, uh, rumors and speculation. So uh, check back here next week. We will be talking about that then. And um, check uh, if you'll check the graphics, we'll have the next the upcoming events in football, basket or not football, basketball, and softball and baseball. And uh, we'll definitely uh, keep be trying to keep you all updated. Follow the towel rack. Matt has an article out um, talking about one. Western's chances. I'll try and remember to put a link to that in the show notes. Um, yeah, there's a couple of them there. Link Matt's stuff. There we go. I wrote it down. Thanks, bro. Uh, so definitely check those articles out. Matt does a really great job of getting those up and everything. Um, and then... Um, so um, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, definitely check back next week. We appreciate your support. And um, as always, guys, go Tops. Go Tops. Conference USA. Have a good day. Thanks, dude. See you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Peace out, homie. Hey, down. Solid. <laughs>